Hey, good afternoon. It's time for Broker Talk. Thanks again for coming and listening to this half hour show all about real estate, where we take you behind the scenes. Today, I have a great guest, Carlos Vargas of Vargas and Vargas Insurance Company. He's going to help us understand the complexity and the need uh, for homeowners, renters insurance, and how to bum bundle all that. But I have one burning question. Why in the world do all the insurance companies have the biggest buildings in the world? Why is that, Carlos? Because I know investments in real estate is a great thing to do. So. <laughs> investing investing in where it's going to come back right? the returns yeah yeah yeah. that sounds like a setup to me um <laughs> <laughs> and it's just us being us but um right. aside from the fact that real estate investment is a fantastic way to do that when you invest in real estate you also need insurance so let's kind of break it down i know that the 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 market uh is pretty hot uh what did you call it the market is wild hardening hardening, hardening. the insurance and, market is hardening and what does that mean when the insurance market is hardening well what it means so the insurance market was soft soft means you have a business you have a home i can go to my underwriter and say hey larry's got this wonderful business going or this beautiful home I'd like to give him discount that discount I'm able to shop for discounts, but, you know, we have 13 companies, uh, 13 different companies. So I'm able to go to them and say, hey, I'd like to give them a 10% discount for this or 15% discount for that. Today, it's like, don't come to us for discounts. We're actually jacking up prices. Uh, you know, all of the uh, fires out West, uh, all of that, all of those floods in Germany, all of that, yeah. all of those losses have an effect on everybody's insurance because when you buy insurance from like company A or company B, they insure your home for a certain percentage, but a big chunk of your coverage is they buy reinsurance on that insurance coverage. So this right. provides them if there's ever a major catastrophe, there's enough income at hand, enough money at hand to take care of the claims. So all of those reinsurers are usually in the Caribbean and uh, Bermuda. Um, those reinsurers are jacking up rates 30%, 50% because of the wildfires out West. Some of those are all covered, all reinsured. The same thing with Florida, the earthquake in Syria and Turkey. Some of that was covered. Some of that wasn't because folks didn't have earthquake coverage. So that has an effect on everybody's insurance across the world. Kind of the old, we're all in it together, you know? Wow. Um, and now I understand a little bit more about reinsurance and why Warren Buffett went into that. So he's right. insurance the, money. He's insuring the re, the insurance companies. Exactly. And Warren goes where money is. So if Warren's right. there, Mr. Buffett, he's yeah, he's definitely picked up. A, a well, good one of the line. things that that I know, I had a uh, a friend I grew up with, and he had a uh, he was a great diver. Went all the way to the Olympics. Uh, his coach was an actuarial. And mm -hmm. I always wondered, what the heck is that? And that that's the person who decides what rates are going to be. Am I correct? And how many buildings are going to burn? How many single yeah. families will have losses? You know, how many deaths in this age group? So actuarials go into the life insurance business, the property and casualty, the autos. You know, how many Chevy Volts will blow up or how many Teslas will hit a wall? They don't know who, but they know how many based on the experience. They're always looking at those numbers uh, so to make sure that it's charging enough and protecting. Sure. The and it's another one of those jobs that um, I don't think any high school guidance counselors direct anybody to. But <laughs> actuarials make a lot of money. Because... They do. They come out of school making buku bucks, right? Because yeah. they're, yeah. they're, such, they're such in high, high demand. Yeah, there's so, so few yeah. of them. I, I am not a numbers guy. I'm more of a storyteller guy on that, you know, on that side. Yeah. But hey, if you're a numbers person out there, uh, <laughs> maybe real estate or right, insurance right. isn't the thing for you, you know? Yeah. Oh, um, well, you have a child who is, get him into the actuarial exactly. college somewhere. And yeah. 
in in any event um let's get back to why we're here so um sure. i have uh, i do have investments i do have uh um renters who are there sometimes i demand renters insurance and sometimes i don't yeah. but could you talk about renters insurance for a little bit Sure, sure. So uh, if you don't own a home or if you know of somebody who doesn't own a home, they really should have renter's insurance. Renter's insurance does a couple of things. Actually, there's many things, but really the top ones that come to mind is if there's ever a claim there, if there's ever a fire, if there's ever any type of reason that that renter needs to move someplace else, uh, that renter's policy will cover their hotel bill someplace else rather than having the Red Cross put you up for one night and then you're on exactly. your own, right? Yeah. Then if you've paid the rent, how are you going to get that? Also, renter's insurance gives you a history with with a property and casualty insurance company. So if you're renting now with the hopes to buy, if you go two years, three years, five years without any claims, at the time that you go to apply for a homeowner's policy, you're going to get credits from having a renter's insurance policy that you've never put any claims on because traditionally renters have very few claims. Um and the extra benefit, one of the other benefits is it covers your personal property while it's away from the away from the apartment. So, um, and it's funny, I was just reading an article earlier, earlier today, this couple uh, moved into a hotel for one night, hung their uh, suit hangers on the uh, sprinkler, little doodads, causing $150,000 of damage to that part of the hotel. Um, the renter's policy would reimburse the hotel company because they would sue you. And then your policy gives you usually a half a million dollars of liability coverage. And the last thing is uh, renter's insurance is so inexpensive when you bundle it with your auto insurance. It could be a couple of dollars a year if it's not free, right? So when you have your car and your renter's insurance package, the savings on the the auto insurance is usually close to what it costs for the cost of the renter's insurance policy. So um, you packed so much in there, Carlos. So let me go yeah, back sorry. there. And and because some people uh, might not have caught what what I knew that you were saying. Um, first of all, what kind of an idiot puts their their suits on, uh, you know, a <laughs> right. But anyway, people right. do. It's tempting. Things. You see it. Right? Yeah. yeah. Just hang this yeah. Here and, yeah. Right. Yeah. But it, it's mostly the insurance renders insurance is for your things that belong yes. to you. And I yes. didn't know that, you know, that's your things when you when you go outside, because to me, that would seem like negligence, you know, hanging right. your 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 clothes but it's but an I'm, accident right yeah. I, even yeah. though i look like this i am not an attorney nor do i want to be <laughs> uh actuarial maybe not an attorney right right yeah. <laughs> um but um one of the things that you said i think every renter should listen to if when you go to buy your home, you get checked out financially in a whole bunch of different ways. They check your credit and and uh, down through, have you ever been um, um, uh, lost uh, a rental because you didn't pay your rent, things like that. They check right. all of that of uh, an eviction. Eviction is a horrible thing. Don't get evicted. Figure out right. how to not right. be evicted. But on the plus side, if you're getting renter's insurance and you go to buy a home, what you just said, Carlos, is that makes a difference to the insurers because each home, they're going to cover that home based on equity and their, their own statistics. But yes. if you have something that you've done beforehand, like pay your bills and things like that, that's going to help you get a lower price. History and your credit score. The higher yeah. the credit score the better the premiums uh, statistics right. have shown have shown these insurance companies that if somebody has a poor credit score they're more apt to have claims a probably they don't have the funding to maintain the property so as right. a result there's more claims coming their way right. so many many companies will say yay or nay or they'll say we've pulled carlos's credit score it's a soft pull uh, so it doesn't affect your FICO scores. And they'll say they qualify for preferred, they qualify for extra preferred, or they qualify for standard, or they don't qualify at all. So then sure. you have to go to one of the other companies and see. So, sure. and this happens, all insurance companies do this. Sure. Uh, they get your name, your date of birth, where you live, and they can tell you whether you qualify for their product or not, and at what rate. Yeah. 
Yeah. And, and they can do that almost automatically. Like so many of these firms, right. you go in and you, you know, you're asking auto insurance, uh, uh, homeowners, renters insurance, you can do this online. I suggest exactly. that you don't do that. I suggest you talk to a professional right. because if you don't know anything about it, just filling out a form is not going to be the best thing for you. Right. And you're going to have deductibles where you shouldn't have deductibles. Like dedu we, right. r we run into this often, de deductibles on a glass loss, right? So you buy glass coverage and you have like a thousand dollar deductible on it. You have to uncheck that box when you're online. If you don't uncheck the box, then your windshield gets smashed. You've got to come up with the first thousand dollars. It might cost $800 to repair that windshield. And the insurance company's on the hook to pay nothing because you have a thousand dollar deductible. So yeah. Yeah. Or that first thousand dollars, you right. know, you better hope right. you rolled that thing over. <laughs> and, <laughs> you don't and cause it's yourself not, damage. Yeah, right, right. Um, but I, I think um, it's uh, uh, the last thing that you said that I wanted to make sure people understood is bundling. Yes. So you go out for a product. I'm going to buy a, a, a an apartment rental. You know, and and I'm not thinking about the rest of my life. I'm not thinking about my car insurance because I bought that last summer, you know, and all yeah. that. But if yeah. when you're going out for your insurance, you talk to uh, either the agency or mm -hmm. your broker, and we'll get to that in a moment. But you ask yeah. your agency or your broker, um, can you bundle this, meaning right. uh, my auto insurance and my uh, apartment renters insurance and say you have a bunch of uh, photography gear or fishing yes. gear or you yes. know all of that you can have Fine a separate arts, yeah. yeah right right and and so you want to get a bundle because that's how insurers um can make it more palatable yes. um uh, yes. for you and uh, right and there's different ways to bundle so you know we might we might look at your home and your auto and let's say our Bella or our Travelers or Mopfrey, one of those carriers will say, yes, we'll take both of these risks because credit scores and all this stuff that make right. them a great client. Or our Bella might say, hey, we do not want the home. But we'll definitely want the auto, but we'll give right. you a bundling discount if you can prove to us that you're writing the home in your agency. So we might write the home with Travelers. So even though they're not the same company, they're different companies because they're in the same independent agency, uh, we can still give them a bundling discount uh, because we proved to them that we're writing both risks and right, right. the discount. So, so what that means is you are a broker who can deal with a variety of different companies versus being a uh, someone who works for a company that only has their products. Now, I know Northwestern is like that. That you could, if it's a Northwestern agent, you can only buy the Northwestern products from them. Exactly, exactly. So there's two different types of insurance agents. There's a direct writer, which I was for my first 15 years, and then there's a broker. A direct writer represents one one insurance company, whether it's Travelers or Liberty Mutual or Geico. Um, so when a client comes into us, and I'm a direct writer. Um, I can only have that. I only have that Allstate product to sell, uh, which which is fine. But if there's ever a, a claim and you buy insurance for a claim, and let's say you have a couple of claims, in at renewal, the insurance company is going to say, "Hey, Larry, we don't. We're no longer interested in insurance. You become there's a term for it. You become not one of our best risks. So you need to go someplace else. So." Me as the direct writer, I have no other place to take you. So I can't help you navigate it. But as a broker, um, if company A says, hey, you become too risky for us, we have another 11, 12 companies that we can shop you with. We have a story because we've been sharing you for, for a while. So then we go to our un underwriter and say, you know, they were with company A for 22 years. I had two losses. This is the reason. We'll find somebody. It's a lot easier for the broker right. to do that. You paid right. no more dealing with an insurance broker. The fees are all built into the price. So whether you go direct to a Travelers or a Geico, or you come to a Vargas or Flynn Insurance or Delaney, um, you're paying the same rates. So you're not right. saving anything. You're doing a lot more work if you don't go to an independent agent. 
Well, and and it's not just the insurance companies, but the the uh, mortgage business is just like that. You can exactly. get your mortgage from uh, your local bank, Bank of yes. America, Chase, Wells Fargo, to name three of the worst. Uh, yes. But uh, my opinion, not yours. Um, <laughs> but you know, you can also get it from a credit union. You can also get it from a uh, a mortgage broker, a loan officer, who does a similar thing that you're doing. He he or she will shop your mortgage to a variety of different uh, lenders um, yes. for you. And, yes. and a lot of people do. don't know that most of these mortgages. Uh, the day you cl you close on that, they may already have somebody who's already bought that mortgage. Um, There's an investor, right? That's yeah. taken it way before it goes to closing. Yeah. Right, and and the fear uh, today is that we don't repeat 2008, 2009, 2010, where there right. was uh, uh, these were being sold and then resold and resold, and everybody's making some profit on it, but nobody checked to see if the people could pay their mortgage. Right. And right. and when they couldn't pay their mortgage because they were given, you know, no income, no credit report uh, things, then everything started to crash. Right. And th there are systems in place right now where you can't do that and right. where that's not going to happen. Verification might have, and all those things. Yeah. We might have an adjustment in price. There's always an adjustment in price. Right. right. But it's not going to be a crash uh, like right. it was. For that reason, there might be some other reason. I right. um, interest rates, interest yeah. rates, interest yeah. rates, interest rates. You know, that's another discussion about why and what. And it's always uh, people think, well, now my credit card is taking more money. Um, mm -hmm. But the whole idea about your whole financial thing is to use all of these things. Isn't it wonderful? You can go get money from somebody you don't know and right. use it. And if you use it correctly and for the right way, it, it's a boost. If you right. use it incorrectly, it's it's going to be nothing yeah. but trouble for you. Exactly. You'd be paying for that vacation for a long time. These are right. people, uh, yeah. this stuff, kinds of things. And there's there are. Uh, everybody is going to go through it. I mean, because right. insurance and auto and uh, owning your own home or renting our home, these are things everybody goes through. And schools exactly. don't teach these the simple mathematics mm -hmm. or the arithmetic or why you would do this. And that's a, that's a shame because we're it sending kids out I think home economics. There. Exactly. Home economics. Yeah. Right. So important. Right. Yeah. We so, got it from our parents, but not everybody gives it to their children. So it's a so they're thrown out without yeah. having an understanding. Yeah. Um, so bundling is when you take uh, when you're looking for one kind of insurance and you go and you go out there and you bundle. You're looking for uh, homeowners. So you bundle your car and right. uh, your boat or your right. second yeah. home, whatever yeah. you have. You want to get the best deal from someone you like and trust. And yes. I think with with insurance people, just like loan officers, even though that loan was sold to someone else, or you have coverage with it's a different company than your 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 brokerage, I have you. Right. I have you right. and I like you and you right. are going to help me understand this and you are going to help me go through it. Right. And, and most independent agents will review your policy at renewal yeah. and say, Larry, you're with company A. We can move you to company B and save you 11 percent or we or instead of your rate going at 8 percent, it'll, it'll only go up 2 percent. So we're constantly doing that. Um, our staff um, is constantly reshopping because we want to keep you as a sure. customer for the long haul. Sure. Um, sure. So, and if we don't have the sharpest pencils, then we're going to lose you as a customer. So part of right. what an independent agent does is every year um, looks at your renewal and say, can we do better? Let's yeah. see what the other markets are doing. Because the market is changing, you know, and every from day, one year, every from day. one year to another it does change. Exactly. So you just kind exactly. of, um, and you change, you may have acquired some fancy artwork. 
you know, so at least having a new a call, baby, a, do, a new exactly, baby, a new job, exactly. a new, uh, 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 a pending divorce, you know, any yeah, kind uh, of. Your home goes from owner occupied to investment. It's you still need insurance. It's not the same policy. So unless we get on a call, get on a text or an email, we're never going to know. So any changes, yeah. we have a follow up email every year. Any changes that have occurred, please let us know. And then we can advise you whether you have the right right. Policy. right. Well, this uh, this dovetails into uh, one of the things that I tell people all the time. I, um, quite often, uh, the consumers who don't know, and it, you get upset when you have to go pay money for stuff. I, right, you know, right. everybody wants to keep their money, and um, uh, but uh, so you go out and you you look for someone that you can work with, a true professional. A true professional in this business will make sure whatever you're asking me for, I focus on what your needs are, not the products or services that I have. Exactly. You know? and, and, and if and if I can't help you, I just referred somebody today to somebody who can. It's not something exactly. that we can help you with. I'm sorry, exactly. but my friend deals in this every single day. She'll yeah. be able to help you a lot better. Yeah. yeah and, so. and that could be for any number of of. Uh, arcane reasoning, you know, that maybe there's uh, the house uh, is grandfathered into some kind of zoning, something or other. And, right. Uh, right. It doesn't fit. Um, I, I don't want to get mired down in, in the many ways that insurance right. companies look to change the ball or have to protect themselves in, right. in, in, right. in a situation. Um, because yeah. insurance is a bet, you know? Yes. The company bets that uh, we're going to make more money from you than we're going to have to spend on you. Right. And right. Uh, yeah. Yeah. The statistics are 6% of everybody who owns a home files a claim. 6%. So there's 94%. So if you collect enough money over that period of time and the insurance companies invest it at the time of a loss, they have more than enough money to take care of all of those losses that are happening every single year. We don't know which 6%. That's where the actuarials comes in. They'll right. tell you, we know it's six. We just don't know who the six are. Right. So right. Uh, that's what st the statistics have always been. 6% of all homes will file a oh, claim. Yeah. I, I have rarely in my life had to make any kind of claims. I don't think I've ever had a house claim. Uh, I've yeah. had very few auto claims, mostly when yeah. I was hit. You know, so that's not my insurance yeah. company getting whacked. At, um, right. 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 And, and that begs maybe the conversation about deductibles. Um, so we review other agencies' insurance. Somebody might refer a client to us or a neighbor, and they're paying a little bit more. They'd like to get a second opinion on that policy. And we'll run into situations where there's a $250 deductible. The savings between $250 and $1,000 on a single family home is $300 a year. And they've been in the home 15 years, so they paid $4,500 more on their insurance than they should have. So they should have had, I mean, we carry a $2,500 deductible because the savings is huge compared to a two fifty. dollars So right. again, you, you carry the deductible that you can financially afford. So if there's ever a loss, I know that the first $2,500 comes out of our pocket. Um, so you really, that's where a lot of folks just don't, don't they don't pay attention to what they're buying. Right. And right. I just, yeah. Right. I always tell my clients as I'm working with them, my job is to bring you all the options to make sure you understand all the options. Yes. You yes. have to make the decision for yourself. Yes. I can tell yeah. you what I would think is right, but I'm never going to do that first. Right, 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 right. You know, you, you've got to tell me where you're landing exactly. on this. because Do you feel comfortable? I, because if I don't know what you're exactly thinking, I, I can't guess that. Right. You know, and, right. and everything is so anecdotal, uh, yes. meaning like um, you live near that forest that was burning. Up, yeah. You right. know, um, right now, people that live on on the ocean, people live in, you know, like in New Orleans where it floods yeah. over and over again. That's a whole different level of of right. I want to be there because I want to be there. Right. Right. And if, and if you do, then you're going to bear the brunt. You're going to pay. You're going to pay for flood policies that could run right. thousands of dollars a year. Um, right. We live here on the Neponset. Our flood policy is maybe twenty five hundred dollars a year. You know, okay. um, I have a friend who owns a property in Hull. Her 
flood is almost nine thousand dollars a year. Right. The Atlantic Ocean washes underneath her back deck. You yeah. Know, she's got three or four claims a year, and FEMA prices that accordingly. There's an awful lot of um, talking about flood. There's an awful lot of private flood companies a- 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 around, and 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 HUD, um, HUD and Fannie and Freddie weren't accepting binders from them, but now they are. So if your home's in the flood zone, um, you know, these flood companies will look at it and say, what are the chances of this ever flooding, right? It's just the back of their lot. This home is not in the flood zone. Um, You can save 50%, 60% on your flood policy if your broker shops it around to the flood market. So um, if you have a flood policy, you should definitely get together with your broker and say, hey, Will the will the will the private flood markets insure my home? They won't insure my condo here, but they insure an awful lot of uh, right properties with flood in 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 flood zones. Yeah, and and the whole thing about flood zones is they're changing. The government they is are. changing yeah. the the flood zones because of certain things that are happening. Uh, where yes. uh, you know New Orleans is just one of them, but there are so many. Uh, floods that we've had, you know, and hurricanes right. that have come up. Uh, what happened in Florida when that hurricane right. came through yeah. Fort Myers? I mean, right. it devastated. It just devastated things. So right. they're going to be building back for a good long while. Uh, right. And the, the insurance market is almost non-existent down there. So if you find homeowners insurance, you're paying very high rates because, you know, these companies, they can only pay so often. And Eventually, the reinsurance markets say, hey, no matter what you pay us, we're not going to insure your book of business. So as a result, they've got to charge right. more money or go to the state pool. or Right, so. right. So it, it's both complicated and not complicated. It's yes. not complicated when you work with a, a true professional right. who understands the market. Um, right. And uh, I've always, me personally, um, have always gone to a broker because I want them to do more of the work rather than go to an individual. And those those blue chip companies, they call themselves yeah. these blue. And some of them are, in fact, blue chip companies and blue chip means they're making a lot of money. So right. they're making right. a lot of money because they're selling a premium product at a right. premium price. They're making um, money for not the policyholders, for the investors. So. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. And um, uh, as my wife used to tell her friends that, you know, um, I'm sitting out there and she likes to see a man sweat. <laughs> so <laughs> I like to see the professional I work with right, right. Uh, making some effort. And, right. And, exactly. Uh, earning Earning their keep. Earning their keep and caring about you. It, yes. it's yes. it's not just you know getting that automated happy birthday card or right uh a thing like that it's not about that it's about truly caring and yes. truly caring is helping your clients live a better life in their own life right. right because that'll make you have a better life too right and that'll make them think of us every time somebody right. questions insurance right so right. it's uh yeah Everybody's you know, family to us. Our our staff is family. Our clients are family. Our referral right. partners are family. I mean, we truly try to tr- treat everybody as like I would want to be treated. Yeah, yeah. Always, always, always. You know, and yep. um, so uh, you know, when people have a question, that's the only thing on their mind. And you you're sitting in your office, and you may get twenty, thirty calls, and have to make fifteen. You know right. that day, but that one of those 20 calls, they're sitting there waiting for your answer. Right. So right. get back to people. Yeah, it's, absolutely. You know, answer your phone and get back to people. And, yes, um, yes. That is what's professional. Keep keep aware of what's going on in, yes. in the market. And again, that's what true professionals do. I mean, you could almost go up to any professional in any of these uh, businesses and ask them the last time they went to an industry conference, you right. know? If right. they're spending money to learn how to be better, right. they're more likely going to be better. Exactly. Exactly. And, yeah. Oh, I don't. I don't go to them because you know I don't take time off to go to Las Vegas or. And yeah. they're always in like in Vegas or Orlando or. Yeah. Right. Right. You know, they San make it Diego. easy to go. Right. Well, it makes you want to go. Uh, right. I'm. Absolutely. I'm not a Vegas guy, but uh, hey, Austin is a fun place. You know. 
and you're hanging out with some like-minded people who are cutting edge and sharing, right. you know, how to take care of our clients. Right. Right. Yeah. Right. Exactly. Uh, Carlos, it's so great to have you here. Uh, Thank you. How would people uh, get in touch with you um, sure. if they want uh, they want to continue this conversation about their policies? And I'm sure that you would look about at anybody's policy and, and help them understand if they're getting the best deal or you could help them better. Absolutely. And I thank you for the invitation to come, Larry. I've been watching your show online on YouTube for quite some time, and I really love what you, I love your passion. I love your guests. Uh, the best way to reach me is to call our office, 617-298-0655 or vargasinsurance.com. Um, click on the contact us and one of us, either me or one of my, one of my partners will be back in touch and we'll respond usually within five or 10 minutes. Um, hey, got it working on it. Sorry, I need more I, information. I know you're based in the Boston area, but do you cover yeah. other states as well? You no, know, we're just Massachusetts bound. We are yeah. so fortunate to maybe insure 12,000 homes all over Massachusetts. Yeah. Um, I've been, this, this is my 43rd year at this. Uh, wow. We insure homes from Ipswich to P-Town all the way out to the Berkshires. And once clients come to us and they move, they'll say, can we keep you as a client? Can we keep you as a broker? Absolutely, we can. Yeah. So, um, you know, we're just all over Massachusetts. So any anywhere in Mass. I know I have a lot of investors that that, that watch this show. They yeah. don't always. Uh, in fact, several of my investors right now are focusing on Airbnb. So they're looking up and down the coast. Um, sure. It, and uh, I have a property that's going to close in April now in Maine. Um, oh, wonderful. Is that, it, 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 can you find someone for yes. me in Maine? So we have, yeah. So there's about five, about 8,000 network agents that belong to this business networking and we kind of share referrals across yeah. st state lines and Rhode Island. They'll, they'll refer people to us in mass and we'll refer people out to New Hampshire and Maine and South Carolina again, and so forth. So again, yeah. working with a good professional, get you other good right. professionals. Yes. So, yes. And, and if your professional doesn't have time to help you, even though they're not getting a, a dime from it, uh, right. you probably don't have the right professional. Right. You need to move um, on. You know, because it, it is about doing things. It is so exciting each week here at Broker Talk to have someone who's a subject matter expert like you, Carlos. Thank you so much for sharing. And hey, thank, thank you, you all for listening and watching and subscribing. Um, I look forward to seeing you next week when we have another great show uh, in thank store. You. Thanks, Carlos.